Welcome to the Financial Fun Podcast with your host, Tammy Johnston. This is where Tammy talks with business owner parents and grandparents about the interesting and important subject of money. We promise this to be an interesting and open discussion, as that's how we learn best. And now, here's your host, author of the Financial Foundations. Financial Foundations is a series of books to teach kids about money, goal setting, and living a balanced life. Find out more at financialfund.ca. Here's Tammy Johnston. First things first, I would like to thank all of my listeners that have subscribed and reviewed my podcast and invite you to subscribe and review if you haven't yet. I appreciate you helping us to get the word out and making financial literacy a safe and welcoming subject for kids and adults. Second, please check out my podcast website, financialfund.ca, where you will be able to access past shows, find out more about me and our guests, as well as purchase the beautifully illustrated Financial Foundations books that teach kids about money in a fun, healthy, and holistic way. Hello once again, and thank you for joining us for the Financial Fun Podcast. Today, our guest is the incredibly talented Mike Dorian. Thank you for joining us, Mike. No problems, Tammy. Thanks for having us. So, Mike, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do? What's your business? The business is called Living Soil Solutions, and basically we started out as just kind of um, an alternative to chemicals in fertilizing your backyard. And that's now kind of gone from just helping people use natural amendments and, and natural fertilizers to get rid of all that chemicals in their backyards, but also into the back 40s of people's uh, acreages and farms. And focusing a lot more on that education side so that people understand that the soil is actually very alive with microbes and they're the ones that are doing all the work for us to make sure that we can grow healthy plants. Well, it's definitely needed. So many people are are getting so tired of all the chemicals and the Roundup and all the food sensitivities that are coming up because our food is just filled with garbage now. Oh, it's it's gross, and and a lot of the food is is just fillers. It doesn't have that much nutrients and stuff in it because there's nothing in the soil to to bring that to the food. Yeah. I I always worry when I when I go walking and I see these lawns say don't let kids or dogs out on it because it's just been treated. And I'm going, <laughs> how can that be good for anything? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, those are those are not good, not good at all. Would you tell us a little bit about your family situation? My family situation. So I'm a single dad to a little four-year-old girl named Sunny. Oh, you're in the wonderful fun stage. (laughs) Yeah. Asking questions all the time. Yeah. Why? 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 Hey, but that's how we learn. Why is my favorite question, and I'm a little bit older than Sunny. So So speaking of kids and questions and stuff, like being four, um, She's going to be noticing things about money and stuff. Has she started asking any questions on that subject? Yeah, she's she's piqued a little bit of interest. So, you know, when we go to a, a bank machine and daddy's depositing a check or, or pulling some money out, I'll, I'll have her press all the buttons. So she's getting a little interactive with it. But then I'll explain why. Okay, so daddy did some work. Remember, he dropped you off at daycare and he had to go to work. So he got paid this money. But it's in a form of a check, which I'm putting into this bank, which then it goes into an account where daddy then has a certain total there that he's allowed to then take money out of that. And so I'll just try to explain that. And she's she's catching on to the fact that, you know, it's not just a machine that is going to pass stuff out, but there there is a limit. (laughs) And that's a very important thing because so many kids, because their parents don't talk to them about that. They just go, well, why can't we have it? What do you mean? You just go to the machine and get money. Like they just, they don't understand the connections between everything because we just don't talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. And then she also has a, a little change purse that, you know, we've got a couple of the different coins and it's been, I guess, fun to, to play with that, that money a little bit just because all those coins that each have little animals and stuff on them. So you, she's got the little caribou and the <laughs> beaver and, and uh, the bear and the loony, but she can't quite wrap her head around why the, the dime has a, a sailboat on it. But <laughs> got to switch it up a little bit here and there. And I don't know if I want to explain the history of all that stuff to her just yet. <laughs> well, some of it's a little bit more challenging. I always think, 
when I when I go down to the states, I make the joke because in the states, because they've got they still have dollar bills, which blows my mind, and all their money is pretty bland in color. And when yeah. you in the states, you can have a wallet full of money and be broke because it could be all one dollar bills. I'm going in Canada. If you got a wallet full of money, you got money because the smallest paper denomination we have is five. And even if you've got just a change purse, you could have money in there as far as you need to do. Totally. So it's quite neat on that front. What are some of the other questions that she's she's asking or noticing? Well, for the, the longest time, um, because of just how her birthday has and being um, uh, a split parent, she gets gets things quite a bit more often too. So, you know, if we go somewhere, she usually gets something. So she started to think that anywhere she'd go, she'd just get stuff. So she would ask people at the store, like go up to the cash register and goes, what do you have for me? <laughs> so just explaining to her that there has to be an exchange, um, you know, and in most of those kind of establishments that to buy something, we have to give them money. So I'll kind of explain that when we're at a grocery store, like I'll try to have cash as most, as much as possible to kind of, so she can visually see it and then explain to her, okay, well, remember daddy worked. So this is the money that I earned, but we're using it to buy food so that we can fill our bellies and stay healthy and and not not go hungry. Oh, that's really cool. I love the fact that she just goes and asks the innocence of children. (laughs) Hey, I'm sure there's a lot of times she just gets lucky because she's cute. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, exactly. It's ridiculous. So I I can't let that stuff go to her head. No, no, you can't. But it's like, oh, I I also like going with, well, what do you lose by asking? Nothing. Worst they can say is no. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But yes, it's kind of hard being that parent and and balancing that wonderful (laughs) bit of stuff. Oh, huge. So if you think back to when you were a kid, when did you first start to like notice and realize money and start asking questions yourself? Yeah, so I don't, th- like my folks didn't really bring stuff up to us when we were like as young as Sunny, um, but I've, I've always just tried to treat her as an adult as much as possible, but um the folks, I think, started when we were in our younger teens. Um, you know, we'd ask for some money or maybe the kids down the street had some money so they could buy candy or buy something at the store. And so they started to get us to do the chores and doing the chores, taking the garbage out, doing the dishes, that kind of stuff. And then you'd get a certain amount of money um, per week. And I think once we started to get into the groove of that and see how lucrative it was and how fairly easy it was, too, that you'd start to go, um... Well, uh, I need five more bucks to get this thing. Uh, what, what can I do around the house here? What can I do to help you? Does, does uh, somebody need a massage or something? <laughs> you, you started to get into the basis of whether you did a, a job or provided a service, then you could, you know, make a little bit of money that way. Yeah, I, lo- I love that, that bit of greedy, motivated self-interest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it, it's not a bad, it is not a bad thing. As no. Talking with someone else, greed is greed is a natural tendency. We all have it, and it's not bad in any way, shape, or form. It's how you get your need for greed met. Are you providing better products, better service, value? Are you improving the world some way in order to get that? Or are you lying, cheating, stealing, thieving, that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honest well, enterprise. And I found that kids make such tremendous little business people yeah oh huge huge sunny's been at the i i set up in the summer uh once a week at a farmer's market and she's been there a few times and yeah she could be a little salesperson just oh does somebody want to buy some of this somebody want to buy some of that (laughs) somebody like that is going to be hard to say no to so i think we're going to look into doing a lemonade stand or something in the summer um out at uh chester lake no, lemonade stands and stuff are a great way to teach kids. I remember when my daughter was in brownies and her and her friend and her sister had to uh, had to sell the Girl Guide cookies. And yeah. number one, we taught them all sorts of different things about sales and they rocked it. It, it kind of disturbs me when I see these parents going, well, they'll go and sell all the the chocolate bars and stuff for school and I'm going you're you're robbing your kids of that experience but we also went through and taught them about inventory and counting cool. out a float so if if 
if you start with thirty dollars in, in different denominations for your float and you sell so many boxes how much money do you have to have for that and and making them go through and do that and it was like they really enjoyed it because they understood it because it was practical and right in front of them awesome so yeah that's a great way to do it and then like if you're if you're if you're doing your lemonade stand and stuff like you could you could te- even start teaching her about margins and <laughs> profit and, yeah. and 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 help her refine some of those sales skills cuz oh yeah she's going to be just deadly <laughs> Yeah, get her to get the basis of, okay, these are our, our incoming costs. And, you know, if daddy was actually working for you, this is how much he would charge to make the lemonade. And... <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, well, what do you need for lemons? What do you need for sugar and water in your cups and stuff? And how much does this make and different things like that? And because it's something that they're interested in, oh, my goodness, they get right into it. They're paying attention. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, I think it'll it'll be a lot of fun. What are some of the, what what are some of the financial goals that that she has? Is there anything that she has her eye on that like you said? Because when you when you were a kid, you're going okay. Well, what can I do to earn the, those five extra bucks? You were wanting it for something. Does being four has she goes like there's something that she wants to buy? Yeah, well, somebody just took her. A friend of mine took her to that Build a Bear experience, oh. <laughs> and it was like. We went through the whole thing. She had a great time. And then as we were walking out the door, she was like, so can I get another one? It's like, what? <laughs> so I've now explained to her, well, that cost that person a certain amount of money. And they did that as a, as a gift for you, yeah. that will surprise. But if you would want another one, then you'd have to raise your own money somehow. Or, or you'd have to figure out a way to, to purchase that because yeah. it doesn't happen for free. Yeah. So she, you know, if she keeps holding on to this one, maybe that'll be something that uh, she'll want to jump for. And, and any other time, it'll be just when we're standing at the grocery store, as I'm loading all the stuff up onto the onto the conveyor belt, she's googly eyeing all the <laughs> Kinder surprises and chocolates and stuff there. So, but I'm gonna try to steer her away from all that. Yes, and in moderation, it's not a bad thing. But if you don't watch it, oh man, they can get into all sorts of stuff. And then, yeah. why does yeah. my tummy hurt, Daddy? <laughs> yeah, chocolate and chips aren't good for first thing in the morning. No, they're they're not breakfast food. <laughs> no, <laughs> they're not breakfast food. And with you being being a single dad and stuff, are are you noticing that there's any any differences between how you're teaching her with money and how her mother is teaching her with different things? Yeah, well, definitely, and um, you know, you you see the the differences, and or she'll ask a question, or or maybe she'll even presume that she gets something or or something a certain way, and I have to go, okay, well, is that something that maybe your mom's teaching you? And so we we try to chat at least every couple of weeks just to kind of, okay, well, this is what I've been teaching her. What are you teaching her? And so at least we can try to come on to common goals because we do get along. So that's. <laughs> That's a huge bonus. That's a big but, plus. But those are things that you see, um, you know, certain people have always, you know, they lived their life getting everything that they wanted. So maybe they don't even know any better. So those are the things that they're going to teach their kids as well. So we need to kind of streamline those to make sure that they're they're not on that same path so that they don't get beaten up as bad, but also... Um, not thinking that they're going to get all those things all the time, too. Well, one of the advantages of of, of being a, a, a split household, for lack of a better word, is it forces you to be much more conscious in your conversations about things like that. Where a lot of people that, that are co-parenting together and they live together and all that stuff, so much is just taken for granted. And, oh, yeah. and, and they're missing those opportunities where when you're having to like have those conversations and share that information... It's actually a huge advantage because you're forced to be conscious about it. And money is such an emotional subject and people don't take that into consideration. Like some families, yes, the fam, whatever the kids wanted, they got because they either had the the money to do it or they didn't want to say no or it was just whatever it was where someone's like, no, they never got anything. They had to start working as young as possible and paying for everything and, and saving and you have those two different upbringings come together and then you have all sorts of conflict on yeah. how are we going to parent? 
Yeah, exactly. And I guess like looking at myself, I've, I've never been a very materialistic person and kind of a minimalist. So I, I've definitely probably being the stricter one on this side. So maybe I have to say no a lot more often, but at least I always try to explain why. And then, you know, even if it's for clothing or a certain yeah. thing, Oh, I want this, but I'm like, well, you've got so much clothes already, but you know what clothes are really for? They're for a function. They're just to keep you warm and covered, not yeah. To be, you know, and there's obviously certain ups or uh, certain styles out there every once in a while that you want to wear for certain situations and circumstances. But for the most part, that's what basically clothes are for, right? So. Oh, yeah, totally. And especially when they're little and it's so easy to get them dressed up. I was given so many clothes when when Ayla was, was a baby that she couldn't even wear all the outfits because some of them, oh, it's the most beautiful summer outfit, but she fits it in, like, January. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They outgrow them so fast. It's crazy. Oh, it's, 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 it's insane, but, yeah. So having, having to work through that, one of the things I work with, with I've always had to work with Alec, is I'm, I'm not so much a minimalist, but I'm a neat freak. And I'm going, okay, you only have so much physical space for your toys, and this is all that you get. So <laughs> if you want anything more, stuff has to leave. <laughs> totally. And and now because she's she's working on uh, – she's saving up for some stuff. She's really big into LPS, Littlest Pet Shop stuff. As they, <laughs> as, as they get older, the toys get smaller. <laughs> and – she wants she there's a few things that she wants but this stuff can be pretty pricey like there's big money to be made if you have lps and you're looking to sell it so she's she's looking for ways that she can earn some more money so that she can go out and buy some of these things so now instead of just donating everything to the sally ann or, or things like that she's she's learning how to like sell things on Kijiji, which i think is a really yeah. good skill yeah that's awesome so yeah, so she's learning. We're teaching her how to like write the ads and what do you need to be showing for the pictures and helping her figure out well what is a what is a fair and reasonable price to be asking for things and because she's quite the little entrepreneur. I'm quite pleased. <laughs> cool. Well, I I, did, I wouldn't doubt any other way <laughs> that she would have went any other route. <laughs> oh yeah, she's very very much my daughter. <laughs> the yeah. world's in so much trouble. Well, if, if anything I can rub off on Sunny, it'll be the same thing. And and with her mom, her mom runs her own business as well, so she'll definitely be getting a lot of that feedback from both sides. And she's she's had a chance to, uh, I guess, on her mom's side because she runs a, a food truck. Um, you know, she's been able to help out and help out with little prep things and stuff on the truck here and there, but also see you know those transactions of of mom busting her butt and and serving people certain food items and, and getting that exchange of money and, and whatnot back too. So she's seeing the value on both sides, which is pretty neat. Oh, that's really cool. One of yeah. the things you might want to think about is is having um, her mom teach her about like some of the things like, so she's seeing the transactions and stuff, but talking about like inventory, like when she's getting the truck ready and stuff, because the, the kids will pay attention. They love the concrete stuff and it's, those are skills that she can take forward for the rest of her life. Yeah, oh, huge. Yeah, very much so. So if we could have you and her mom finish off when, when Sunny turns 18 and you guys have taught her the three most important financial lessons, what would you want Sunny to learn? Uh, the most, the most, eh? Um, I think the biggest one is um, not overspending. So, you know, realizing your limitations, especially of what you're bringing in. Um, understanding the compounding interest or on the flip side, um, uh, interest rates, just those power of those uh, percentages. And, um, I guess maybe also that little bit of, uh, kind of not haggling, but just, uh, you know, you don't always have to pay full price for everything. Oh, that's, that's, that's a good one. Cause a lot of people don't think about that one at all. Yeah, that was something I, I learned from my grandpa because the guy never paid full price for nothing. <laughs> if he if he had to, he wouldn't buy it. Which in and of itself has its own quirks, but just just the <laughs> skill of negotiating. Yeah, just to have the um, I think you used this word before, Aichis to to even ask. Yeah, no, very, very, very much. One of the things that I really admire about my mom is 
She has the ability to haggle, and she's really good at it. <laughs> at it. And and it's something that I'm trying to work on a little bit because it's not a natural thing for me because we're we've been raised in okay, well that's the price on it and either you yeah. pay it or you don't. But I remember when we went to um Hawaii a few years ago and my mom was there and, and Greg and Ayla and I and they have the Hawaiian marketplace and we got to go in and learn how to haggle, and, and it was working with Ayla and teaching her how to do it, and she really liked it. She was getting pretty good at it. <laughs> but but the, the learning, I love I love that you brought that up. You're the first person I've had to remind me of that. That's a great skill, the, the ability to learn to negotiate. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This was a great conversation. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Thanks, Tammy. All right. Have a great day, Mike. You as well. Before we leave each other, I would ask all of you listening to please subscribe to and rate my podcast. A review would be most appreciated and feedback is always welcome. Whether it be a comment, future topic suggestions, and or questions you or your kids would like to have answered in the Ask Tammy column on the financialfund.ca website. Please feel free to check me out on Facebook at Financial Foundations Children's Books, on Twitter at Financial Fund, and Instagram at Financial.Fun. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Financial Fund Podcast. Join Tammy Johnston again next week. For more information, please visit financialfund.ca.